Okay, strings using waveguides. We need a MIDI note node, which is going to trigger an, trigger an LFO so node, from which we only want to keep one period. So it's going to be multiplied by a gate, and they are going to have the same length. So the LFO is going to be driven by the MIDI notes pitch, and the gate is going to be driven by this frequency but converted convert it to milliseconds from Hertz. And this way, if I set this to one and use the gate, this way we will only output one period of this LFO, especially if the trigger is connected to the trigger input. And uh, we can use this to drive a sine function and get a sine wave. And if I plug this into a scope, then we can see that we really get a whole sine wave. But we don't need a whole, we just need the half of it. So we Take the half of the, we, we lower the volume of this ramp to the half. So we will have only one peak, one sinusoid peak. So we have our impulse. This is the impulse. What we want to have now is a waveguide. And uh, let's take the input which is going to be the impulse. It will start to travel. First, we travel to one direction, and it will go to the end of the string, where it will hit a wall and turn to negative. But at the same time, another uh, wave will start in, a, in the opposite direction. It will run until the wall or until the end lose some energy and get inverted. And let's add this. Yeah, like this. And here as well. And uh, the output is going to be the sum of the two delays. So we are fine until now. We need the delay times. So we will create an, two inputs for delay and position. And I'm going to create a designer to calculate these big things and it's pretty straightforward we are going to multiply the position by the delay and subtract the result from the delay and this is going to be one and this is going to be the second delay time the sum of this is the delay itself and these are just fractions so delay position like this and move it here like this okay we only need the feedback feedback one feedback two left right and uh, this is the basic setup actually this is the basic waveguide we can plug in the the inputs and um, yeah we need the delay time which is going to be this Let me move this lower. And uh, we need to create a knob for the position and the feedback. And let's use the feedback from 0.9 to 1 and make it. And position is between 0 and 1. And this should actually be OK. 
especially if I create another output here. And yeah, let's take a listen. I hit a note, nothing happened. It's okay. That's okay. This, I don't know. Oh, forgot to raise the volume. It just works. That's nice. Let's give the this uh, this uh, impulse a bit of noise, just a little bit. So I create an LFO noise and. I'm I'm going to rescale it from uh, let's say 0.5 to 1.5, and now it's pretty noisy. But we can cross fade between the original and this version for the impulse, and this way we have control over noisiness. So zero is no noise, and this is pretty much noise. But it sounds uh, pretty much like a nice guitar, but we can enhance it. Let's remove the delay and use an opus instead of the delay. Input, output one, output two. Delay time. Nice. Let's create another opus. Input, delay time, output one, output two. Remove, align, and done. And uh, instead of the uh, instead of calling this feedback, let's call it stiffness. And um, I know that. Because of the two opus filters, we are going to need to subtract from the delay time the length of the sample rate twice. Like this. And uh, let's take a listen. Not much changed, but let's create a knob for the stiffness. We can get pretty nice metallic sounds. And there, here's the thing, this uh, impulse is way too long, so it's um, actually as long as the string, so it's a huge pick. Let's make it smaller by changing the, the speed of the LFO con um, compared to the string. So let's multiply the frequency and divide the gate by the same value. So let's call this impulse size from 1 to, let's say, 32. Nice. So I, I can lower the stiffness and now we have a guitar sound and uh, we still have an option to create a frequen frequency loss as well. So let's create two one pole filters and create a parameter like damping and 
use it from 1 to 0 to 150. And this sounds like a muted guitar. So uh, let's enhance this a bit and let's uh, make the parameters a bit less confusing so I can remove the feedback and use an envelope follower instead. Plugged on the gate, plug into feedback like this, and uh, let's find a nice place for it. This might be okay. I move these parameters to the side, and yeah, for the time being, this should be fine. And give it some high release. Now, what I don't like is that uh, the constant damping is not sounding too nice, and I want to have something that uh, works with the pitch. So, instead of uh, just uh, using the pitch, which results in a too short um, release, like this, we raise it to several octaves. And that's pretty easy to do. We just have to add the multiples of 12 to the pitch. So I create a knob here, and this is going to be damping. And it can go from 0 to, let's say, 16. And this way our damping is pretty constant. And sounds nice. So we only have stiffness and position here. And impulse size. And everything sounds nice. And we can also control the noisiness. I think this is a nice setup and it can create pretty crazy sounds and uh, you can also incorporate velocity and uh, do whatever you want. This is a nice patch, a nice thing. I've learned many things from Julio Smith's uh, uh, documentations online about digital waveguides. It's worth to look them up. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.